Welcome to the FileHold video tour series. My name is Kevin MacArthur with FileHold Systems. In this section we will focus on an area of the system called search. Searching for documents in FileHold is very, very simple. Uh, there's lots of methods to do this and we're going to spend some time focusing on all of them today. Uh, the first way we'll search is very simple and intuitive uh, and that is by browsing our filing hierarchy here. On the left hand side we have a Windows Explorer type structure and if you notice that we have file cabinets Within our file cabinets, we have drawers. Within drawers, we have folders. Uh, in some cases, we can have subfolders. And ultimately, you get to some level of files. Uh, this is a very intuitive way of searching because it, it emulates the way that we search currently in Windows Explorer. Um, it also emulates the way we search for things in file cabinets. So people who've never used a system like FileHold can come in and, and very quickly find what they're looking for. Uh, we've added a few tools in here to make things a little bit more uh, robust. If I want to, I can sort by columns here. Um, I can reorder these columns at any time. I can also add or remove columns uh, to give me the metadata or the information that I need to see um, while I'm sorting. Now by clicking each one of these fields, we can sort um, by the name, by type, by the links, whether or not it has different versions, the current status of the document, when it was last modified or touched, client name, uh, and then of course if we add or remove any columns, we can sort by those methods as well. Now let's say we go in and we customize um, kind of a, a hunt and pack method search we can also save this search in a personal view so that when I log in in the morning, I see the view in the way that I'd like to see it um, with account numbers in the beginning. Uh, when someone else logs in, they'll see things entirely different. So again, very, very easy way to browse file hold and find what you're looking for. But as time goes on, you start to evolve. And, and one of the things that you may quickly do is use our search bar up at the top here. And this search bar is, is deceivingly simple. Um, it acts much like a Google or Bing type search in that it's going to search across the entire repository and look for documents that meet your criteria. And you can type something simple as a word in here. You can type in a phrase. Um, you can use some Boolean commands, like I'm looking for the word dog and cat. Um, so lots and lots of things you can do here. But if I go in and type in a word, it runs across the entire system and brings you back our results. And the results that it brings back are based on three different things. The first thing we're doing is we're picking up searches based on our metadata or index values. And this is the information that you put in during the, the filing stage where you define the type of document, uh, the client's name, the invoice number, uh, current amount, date, notes, and etc. This is all customizable as we talked about in that section, but uh, you'll have com complete control and complete search over these elements that are here in metadata. The second thing we're doing is, is capturing uh, the properties of the document. Things like how big it is, what format it was in, uh, where does it live, uh, the unique identification number that we've given it, or a document control number that we've assigned, uh, who the owner was, uh, when it came in for the first time, what version we're on. Uh, those you don't really have to control a whole lot. They're, they're built into FileHold automatically, and uh, yet those capabilities are searchable. If you were to ask to show you all the PDFs that were 20 megs in size, it could bring you back those documents based on these properties. Now the third thing we're doing is we're searching every word of every page. Um, through OCR and through reading of the text on these files, we're actually going to bring in these documents and tell you why they came up. So if I were to hit this button right here on this invoice and hit highlight results, we would actually load a preview of that document and show you every time your word or phrase was mentioned. Um, this works not only on Word documents, um, not only at the property levels, but things like uh, Adobe files or PDFs. Uh, we can highlight results on the raw text of those PDFs and show you why this one was appropriate and why it was brought back. Here we can see that uh, both invoice uh, was mentioned twice here in this paragraph and I can make this bigger if I need to. So it doesn't really matter <laughs> so much anymore about the left-hand side hi hierarchy when you're searching this way because it doesn't care. It, it looks across the entire organization and looks for things that meet your criteria and it allows you to really um, grab for things even if a file was misfiled or lost. Um, so this gives us a lot of flexibility and power when we start to ask for questions. Now, aside from all this, this is kind of the most common thing we look at. Um, we have what's called an advanced search. And if I click on this here, um, we're going to take things a bit further. Uh, here on the advanced bar, um, I can type in a word or a phrase, and it's going to behave similar to this one up here. It's going to give me a, uh, a Google or Bing type search, bring back results based on those criteria. If I use any Boolean or wildcard commands, those can be put in now. We also have the ability to click on this little tab here called advanced. And if I click on advanced, then we get a string. This string gives us the ability to put in a file or metadata, um, a contain or criteria for the search, and then the search criteria itself. So let's go to the first one here where it says file or metadata. I get a drop down list of all the document types that I've defined for our organization. Uh, the nice thing about FileHold is there's no limit to these. Um, and when you choose one, 
here's a brochure, then the attributes of the index values or metadata that we've assigned to brochures will come up as well. So if I filed a brochure and filed, I filed by author, creation date, notes, the product type, vendor name. And if I filed a contract, I wanted the project manager, the name, date, and notes. So each one of these is different, but yet we can search on each element. We also add some elements for you, uh, things like special fields, uh, the format that it's in, whether or not it's a favorite of someone's, does it have a link connected to it, does it have any annotations or sticky notes on it, uh, what's the version or document control number, what's the ID that we've given it, uh, the type, the size, what folder does it live in. We also can map by library location, whether or not the file has been approved through our workflow review and approval process, uh, when was it filed, when was it created, when was it last approved. Um, who's the person that is working on it or who's the person that created it? Was it me or is it someone else in our company directory? Um, what's the name of the file? Um, what are other metadata tags do we have to grab onto? And then of course all those we're going to have some common fields, fields that are used over and over again, things like author, uh, date, invoice, PO number and that kind of thing. So you'll have kind of a universal list of, of, of field types to choose from as well. So what this allows us to do, and if we take a brochure here and we can say I'm looking for a brochure and I know my vendor's name. So if I click on that, I can then come in and type in what I'm looking for. In this case, we'll put in file hold. Um, or if you have a database lookup or a drop-down list that you've created in file hold, we can actually pull that in for you. And by clicking in the list, you'll see a list of all the vendors that you deal with. Um, so we're going to look for opportunities to get this kind of information into the system. Um, anytime we can cut back on typing, we're going to increase our accuracy. So I'll select file hold. Um, so that's going to bring me back all the brochures that file hold has ever sent me. Uh, but I need something more specific than that. So what I'm going to do is hit the plus sign, and that's going to give me another string, another level of search. And I'm going to go back to brochures, and I'm going to select, and I know the creation date. So I'm looking for a brochure from this year. I'm going to come in and select my date if I remember it, I and mean, I can do that by month or year. Um, or we're going to give you some, some ranges, some, some windows of time that you can choose from. Here we can say it, it was after the 9th or before the 10th or it was greater than or less than or less than or equal to. Um, I can say between. Uh, sometime between the 1st and the 25th, these came in. And I can run that query uh, and bring back all the brochures uh, in the last month. Um, I can hit the plus sign again and add another level of search. I can say it wasn't me who worked on this file, it was someone else in our company. And I can make that decision as well and select from anyone in our list uh, and make that choice. I can hit the plus sign again. I can go down to my special fields and say, um, it was version number seven, or it lived in this particular folder. So on and on I can go and really drill down and find a needle in a haystack based on what my search criteria is. Now, in some cases, you've been so specific here, you're saying something so clear that you don't want content or OCR to, to cloud the results. We have the ability to turn off OCR from this point. So we're not going to bring back strange uh, synonyms or stemming words. We're going to actually just focus on the metadata tags only, um, and you have, always have the option to turn that on or off. I can also turn off the archive search. FileHold has built-in disposition and retention rules. Maybe uh, a brochure after seven years is no longer relevant, so it's moved to an archive automatically. We can choose whether or not we want to search that archive. Maybe we did something right seven years ago and we want to see it. Um, don't bring me back the latest version of this brochure. I want to see all iterations of it uh, so that I can choose uh, which verbiage I want to use for my next brochure. Uh, we can choose to bring the latest uh, or, or the entire stack if we want. Uh, maybe 10 years ago we used account numbers um, or, or certain product names. Now we've changed those names and we're using something else. Go ahead and search back the old stuff as well. I want to bring those into the mix uh, and help make my decision. So you have a very customizable way of searching here that's much different and much more simple from the way we were browsing or just doing basic searches up here. Now once you've built a search that you like, uh, maybe it's something you're going to do over and over again. I can actually hit a save search button here which will allow me to name this search um, and run it over and over again. Um, so when we hit save search, we'll give it a name, uh, we'll make it either public or private. Once we've done that, you'll see over here under your search criteria that you have two categories. One is your save searches for public and one is private. Now all your save searches that are public will be here listed. And if you ever click one of these, it's going to build the template and run the query for you automatically. Um, it filled out the form for you, it knows how many tiers that you built, it remembers your preferences and it brings you back the results. Now for someone who's going to be doing a search like this every day, every morning, they can come in here and they can change the values. They can select different criteria here. They can even add or remove criteria based on what they want to do, but they didn't have to start from scratch. They can start from a template that you've either built for them or they've built for themselves. And the nice thing about our save searches is that you can actually push them out to others. So if you build one that's going to be useful for the entire department, you can push those out to everyone and we'll all have them um, in one swoop. 
Now, as, as simple or as complex as you want to search, we also offer a hybrid solution for searching. There's lots of directions you can take our search from this interface. For example, um, somebody may start their day um, hunting and browsing in FileHold. They may say, I know it was in accounting, I know it was 2010, and it, but I can't remember which client it was. You always have the capability of starting from this point. So by right-clicking a drawer, I can kick off my search from here. Now I'm only looking in 2010 in accounting, and I can come in and build my structure from there. Same thing on this side. If I were to come over here and type in a search for Kevin, it runs across the entire system. It brings me back results. Here's some in marketing. Here's accounting. Here's legal. But I want to be more specific. I'm looking for an email that Kevin wrote me. I can hit the plus sign, and I can begin to narrow down uh, for what I'm looking for. So lots and lots of ways to use FileHold. Um, you don't necessarily have to use one method or over another. Um, a lot of this will happen with evolution and allow you to focus on the, on the tool the way you need it at that moment. Now, for some people, they won't need to use our search at all. Um, FileHold has a capability called Fast Find, which we're going to cover in another section of these demonstrations. But I just wanted you to see how simple this could work from a search perspective. I'm going to minimize FileHold altogether for a moment. And I'm going to launch here Quicken, um, which is just a sample application that I'm using. Uh, this could be something that you're using in your office now. It could be QuickBooks. It could be SAP. It could be um, a lot of different business systems out there that maybe you're working with. Uh, we've made it very, very simple to live your life um, like you've been doing it from another application. And in this example, I've got a screen open, and I want to do a query on a particular account number or a particular word or a client name, whatever it may be. And if I simply highlight the word that I want to do a query on, um, I can hit Control D or a hotkey on the keyboard. It can be whatever that you want. Uh, but in this case, it's Control D. And as soon as I hit that button, FileHold races to the forefront and shows me my search criteria. So what we've done here is we've allowed ourselves to search from another application, continue living the way we've always lived with this application, but integrating the power of FileHold uh, to go along uh, in a fast find search capability. Now this goes f much deeper than this and we'll cover it in a different section. Uh, from this area we can search different fields, um, we can right click a document and search it, um, and then we can also use hotkeys to bring things quickly to the forefront. Thank you for watching our FileHold video tour series. For more information about FileHold or to schedule a personalized demonstration that is focused on your specific business needs, please contact us at sales at filehold.com.